U.S. Army realized that they were defenseless against drones and looking for a way out. Russia's war against Ukraine has forced both sides to make extensive use of various types of drones. Against this background, the U.S. Army cannot solve its own problems with protection against the drone threat, writes The Telegraph. The publication notes that at the front in Ukraine, Ukrainians launch about 100,000 drones every month. Much of the Russians' enormous casualties, which have crossed the 500,000 killed and wounded mark, are the result of the use of hundreds of thousands of drones. True, the Russians are also actively launching their drones in not much smaller quantities, also causing painful losses to Ukraine. Given this technological revolution, the US Army is trying to develop new air defense capabilities that it can deploy in sufficient numbers to block swarms of tiny drones. The main killer of drones would have to be the new M. Shorad air defense vehicle, but it will take many more years for it to appear in sufficient numbers. In the meantime, the army is counting on an intermediate system, M. Lids, an integrated system for defeating slow and low-flying aircraft. For the coming years, this is the best the world's leading army can get to protect itself from tiny drones. M. Lids are mine-protected wheeled armored vehicles equipped with a small-sized missile launcher, small-caliber gun, radar and radio jamming system. Several of these vehicles were sent to the Gaza Strip for testing in combat conditions. It is assumed that the M. Lids complex will consist of two separate machines. On one, Coyote radar-guided anti-drone missiles. On the second, a radio jamming system for jamming the drone. Scale is the main problem. The million-strong U.S. Army needs many hundreds, if not thousands, of anti-drone systems to make a difference in a major war. At the moment, it has only a few air defense systems that it can deploy along with limited forces of outdated Cold War era air defense systems, writes The Telegraph. UK secretly arms Ukraine, sometimes even through smuggling. The airport in Polish Rzezov has become the epicenter of the West's processes to arm Ukraine. The once commercial airfield is now surrounded by air defense batteries. This is where weapons are transported for Ukraine secretly and openly. As stated in the Sunday Times, the airport is guarded by patriots. They were brought there a few weeks after the Russian invasion. They were joined by Sky Saba. These batteries are here because Rzezov has, in two years, become a huge international logistics hub that helps funnel tens of billions of dollars of Western military aid into Ukraine. The Rzezov runway served about 100 passenger flights per week. Now, military and cargo aircraft land there. Military aviation activity has been increased by 167%, with British aircraft landing perhaps the most actively after those from the United States. Details of how Britain and its Western allies move lethal cargo into Ukraine remain classified, but Rzezov is a key hub. In monetary terms, Britain has been a generous donor, providing $5.7 billion in military equipment, the third most among other countries, behind only Germany and the United States. British defense sources compare the center, known as the International Donor Coordination Group, to the military Amazon. Ukrainian logistics teams efficiently scour databases to find the weapons they need while their Western counterparts get to work. British insiders say most British military aid is making its way to the Ukrainian border via two routes. Over the past two years, direct flights have transported millions of ammunition, small arms, long-range missiles and anti-tank weapons from the UK to Poland. Heavier weapons such as armoured vehicles, tanks and artillery are transported across the English Channel and transported by train across Europe. There is a third, less publicised way in which Britain is helping to arm Ukraine. While Western allies have focused on modernising the Ukrainian military and bringing it into line with NATO, Kyiv remains heavily dependent on Soviet systems and weapons, stocks of which quickly dried up during the war. To help replenish Ukrainian stockpiles, some of Britain's bilateral aid was used to purchase Russian weapons from around the world. This work was kept completely secret, partly because of who Britain was buying it from and who was supplying it. A lot of this is being bought in secret, one defence source said, noting that some of the weapons purchased have come from countries whose governments are eager to play a role but don't want the Russians to know about it. 
In some of these deals, the UK effectively acted as a smuggler, buying equipment and then helping to arrange its transfer to Ukraine. We have been approached by arms dealers, all sorts of middlemen and strange people. The supply of Russian equipment and other supplies from all over the world is carried out by many entities and routes, one of the sources said. By banning Ukraine from attacking targets in Russia, Biden gave Putin a gift. The Sunday Times. By prohibiting Ukraine from attacking targets on the territory of the Russian Federation, US President Joe Biden made a gift to Russian ruler Vladimir Putin. Columnist Dominic Lawson writes about this in his material for the Sunday Times. He recalls that despite the fact that the head of the White House, insisting that he will do whatever is necessary to support Ukraine's attempt to repel Putin's army, refuses to allow Kyiv to use American weapons on or even over Russian territory. This policy has now proven fatal for the Ukrainians. Russian troops are destroying Kharkov, placing weapons right in the front of the border, and if they make further territorial gains, they will move to the second city of Ukraine into the range of their artillery. Then complete destruction will begin. However, Ukraine still does not allow the use of US weapon systems to attack warehouses and bases that devastate it, the author states. According to him, the point is not only that Washington demands from Kyiv guarantees that weapons provided by the West are not used in Russia itself. Most of these modern systems are geo-fenced. This means that a weapon's GPS can be programmed to prevent it from operating in a specific geographic area, in this case, the Russian territory. Denying Ukraine the ability to target the source of the attack on Kharkov and Ukrainian infrastructure in general defeats even the clear goal of US policy, which is that there should be some kind of negotiated peace agreement between Moscow and Kiev. Because Putin is not only not interested in any settlement that leaves Ukraine fully sovereign, the only thing that would motivate him to negotiate is the thought that he might actually be defeated militarily or at least fail to achieve what he wants through terror and bombing, writes Lawson.